evening, everybody. Let's start with a round of applause. Let's bring some energy in the room. Come on. Wow, I'm so glad to see happy, cheerful faces. Well, a very, very warm welcome to the fourth edition of India International Brand Summit, presented by Magnon Designery. A huge round of applause and let's begin. My name is Prati Kamra and it's an absolute privilege to welcome you all to this prestigious event. Today, we gather here to celebrate the brilliance of India's marketing mind, discuss the latest trends and navigate the current market realities and also honor the industry's excellence. This summit aims to reflect the true aspirations and trends of global connected Indian marketing ecosystem, providing a comprehensive understanding of the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. Well, whether you are here to gain some insights or network with each other, I think this platform is truly inspiring for all of us. This summit promises to be rich and rewarding experience for each one of you. And once again, I'd like to welcome you all to the fourth edition of India International Brand Summit. Thank you so very much for joining us this evening and making it so, so amazing because uh, looking at you lovely people, I think uh, the whole scenario of the summit has changed because we just wanted everybody to come together and connect. And before we dive into today's exciting lineup, I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all our valued partners without whom this event wouldn't have been possible. So firstly, our presenting partner, thank you so very much, Magnon Designery, for presenting such a wonderful event. A huge round of applause for them. <laughs> AFAX, our social media partner, bestmediainfo.com, our media partner, Talent Town, our online media partner, Tree Shade Books, our publishing partner. A huge round of applause for everybody who has contributed to the success of the event. India News Business, our digital media partner. The Business Guardian, our news partner. Adobe Express, our keynote presenter. And Talent Track, our content partner. We also have four other brands who have supported to make this International Brand Summit a successful one. Our Avatar Z, our performance marketing partner, Candid Marketing, our experiential marketing partner, thank you so very much, and Neo Group, our investment partner, and Connect Insight, our omni-channel CX partner. Thanks to all our partner for bringing this event together. Well, now taking this evening ahead, I think we have exciting lineup of program and starting with two dynamic panel discussion for some of the leading experts who especially joined us this summit to make this an exciting one and a memorable one. So our first panel discussion is titled as Agencies versus AI, the dawn of the machines. In this session, we will explore the synergy between human intuition and machine intelligence and how this collaboration can redefine creativity and expand the boundaries of what's possible. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to our esteemed panelists. First, we have the Fala Chongtu, Senior Director of Strategy Operations and GTM Shared Services at Adobe. I'd like to invite Fela on stage. Fela heads the strategy and operations for Adobe Consulting Business for the international markets with a rich industry experience in GTM strategy, marketing sales, and digital. Fela and his team are at the forefront of partnering with global brands on the digital transformation journeys, including Gen AI use cases. A very, very warm welcome. And everybody, once again, let's welcome Fela with a big round of applause. Well, next up, I would like to welcome Mr. Rajat A.B., Vice President of Global Marketing India and Chief Marketing Officer of Greater India at Chenidhar Electric. A very warm welcome, sir. Rajat is a thought leader 
and a strategic marketing expert overseeing his company, an LNT electrical and automation business. His diverse leadership roles across Europe, America, and the Asia Pacific region has been and valuable. His expertise in marketing, strategy, sales, and PL management has been incredible. A very warm welcome, sir. Next, joining us on stage is Samir Narkar, who is the founder and CEO of Connect Insights. A very warm welcome, sir. He's a techie at heart. With a flair of storytelling, Samir is the chief software architect at Connect Insights with over two decades of experience in expertise, spans across tech, marketing, sales, customer experience, and management. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. And finally, I'd like to invite our moderator of this session. We have Kanika Mittal, who is the country manager for Tabula India. A very warm welcome. Well, Kanika is a distinguished leader with 20 years of experience across digital technology, e-commerce, retail, and consumer goods. She leads marketing excellence through generative AI and creative solutions of spearheads, publisher partnerships to ensure impactful reach. Thank you so much for joining us. And now I'll request our moderator, Kanika, to please head this conversation. Thank you so much, and let's begin. Are we ready? Yes? Let's begin with a huge round of applause. Hi, good evening. Um, am I audible at the back? It's also a good way to check uh, how awake the audience is. Awesome. Um, very, very warm welcome to our panel. When I saw how the chairs were organized, I almost thought that this is going to be like a debate. We have two people <laughs> representing agencies and maybe two people representing AI and like, there's going to be a nice big war on the stage. Sadly, once we got onto it, we reorganized ourselves and we are back to the panel format, but we'll try and keep it as interesting as, as, as possibly a debate, especially considering the backdrop of the elections, uh, both here and in the States. So welcome again, everybody. It's a very, very distinguished panel, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Uh, let me begin by asking you um, around how do you feel the future of marketing is changing with the advent of AI? Good evening. I think artificial intelligence is a buzzword these days. Yeah, For marketeers, when you start your day, I mean, you get into any meeting, the first question, I mean, you ask your team, what new AI tool are you using? Yeah, How are you using AI uh, in, in, various, in various marketing efforts? So according to me, uh, AI is a reality. Uh, data says that Worldwide, 70% of the marketing uh, fraternity is already using it, AI. Yeah, that's that's that as recent as last month. 70% people, marketeers, and I would use an analogy to explain why AI is important. 30 years back, when you uh, used to do your work, there were no laptops, there were no computers. Yeah, everything was manual. Computers, laptops came, and they changed. AI is going to change things at a, I would say, hypersonic speed. Now, when it comes to uh, marketing, there are several use cases of AI. Yeah, Whether it is using AI for content creation, whether it is using AI to cull data, yeah, taking a lot of insights, millions and trillions of data which sits. How do you use AI to draw insights? How do you use AI to buy media? When you go and buy, gone are the days when you are going to manually go and media planners are going to go and manually uh, negotiate with publishers. Everything is AI driven, yeah? So on and so forth. So I believe that AI is a reality. Uh, it is extremely critical for uh, marketeers, for agencies to understand what is happening. Uh, so many tools are there. The, 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 the tough part is there is an ocean of, of apps and tools which are there in AI. Uh, how do you navigate in that ocean and choose the right tool which can meet the right objective? Yeah? So if you are able to solve and navigate that problem, 
then you are a really efficient marketer you are really making good use of ai so to sum up uh, kanika i would say ai is reality you need to live in a real world and you you need to make the most of what the reality prints presents in front of you no that's a great point and it reminds uh, you know everyone that there is a bit of an oxymoron here in this statement right because we are talking about artificial intelligence but we are also talking about reality in the same zone and in the same space and you know the two are usually considered diametrically opposite of each other so i want to build on that a little bit with you uh, fella and it would be great if you could comment on um, you know for example if um, this is the reality of today how are agencies which are at the front foot of providing solutioning for brands ensuring that brands stay ahead of the curve how do you see them adapting to this thank you kanika so uh, before i share my points let me just preface it with um what we do so i run strategy and operations for adobe consulting for international markets so which is all markets except the us so we work with global top agencies and brands um in their digital transformation journey especially in the area of ai and in ai perhaps in the area of gen ai um so i see two tectonic shifts big shifts right so when it comes to agencies the first shift that we are seeing is the business model is changing right so the change is very fundamental it's not uh, that a small thing is changing the very business model so if you look at the business models of agencies um including some of us it's very time and material right so you bill it there's a bill rate to it there's a material cost to it that's your model so they are slowly shifting to what i call interface uh, models and workflows so they're they're starting to white label uh, some of the adobe products some of uh, let's say dali mid journey uh, even um, open ai uh, models and then offering that um, as a service and charging for it so there's a uh, model that um, is sellable or resellable and then there are interfaces you go there do something and you get an output right so that's a very fundamental uh, change that we see and lastly since um, ai has data layer to it as well as output layer to it there's a workflow that is being built before marketing is a you know you wake up you feel creative and you do something cool uh but with ai you have to be very structured and you have to uh have a standard workflow so that itself can help you produce uh what used to take 3 months this is how i articulated what used to take 3 months now take three prompts right so to do that you need workflows so in the agency side from tnm we are shifting to models interfaces and workflows on the brand side uh, i don't know if the question included brand but let me just add it uh, we see lots of innovation there's a brand that we work with i've asked them permission to share this so i'll share it called hankel hankel is a uh, consumer goods uh, company but they also have a salon where they use their hair care products they will scan your hair and based on your hair type they will personalize all communications let's say your blonde and curly hair it creates a segment that segment is used as um, gen ai prompt and all the images and uh, product recommendations as well as all even the languages that they used to communicate to you is personalized to you so what we see is from personalization they are moving to something what i call individualization that's a big tectonic shift as well so think about it this way there's a big data customer data you package it and use it as ai prompts and then you get an output to communicate right so that's uh, another shift that we see and that's what we are helping brands do thank you amazing so so what i hear you say is that on the agency side it's kind of boiled down to let's say models interfaces and workflows so it's more about using technology for automation for productivity etc while on the brand side you know it's more about um, bringing you know sparks of creativity and speed 
uh, by simply understanding the consumer insight better and then being able to act on it faster rather than relying on the entire human chain of creating communication, getting approvals, changing it, etc. So it's very interesting and I think to, me, to my mind, uh, what really resonates as a theme is the angle of technology playing a huge role here and the evolution of MarTech that happens as a result of it. So Samir, since you're a techie and this is such a big passion area for you, you, know, for you uh, how do you see this whole conflict of um, all of these different elements coming together? Yeah, sure. Am I audible? Yeah. So, see, from the tech side of things, we, we were always into the world of AI. You know, I mean, AI really picked up after all Gen AI, I think, came out in Jan 2023, and, you know, everybody was like, oh, now AI is there. But, but the software products that we worked on were always built on top of AI. Now, I work with a lot of brands uh, from the customer experience side of things and also marketing. Uh, and on top of that, we are a tech company. Uh, so the way we look at AI is, you know, one of, it has done many things, but the best thing that it has done is, is the personalization at scale. Uh, and uh, we at Connect Insights, we work with a lot of customer experience brands who, uh, who believe that care is the new marketing, where, they, where customers reach out to them on all the channels, they engage with them, they understand what they want, and the entire omnichannel experience has uh, has improved a lot because of AI. Because today, I wouldn't want to get communications from the brand where it is irrelevant for me. You know, I interact with so many brands. I uh, go with airlines. I have, uh, you know, I'm a customer of banks. And I do get a lot of uh, marketing messages from them. But they have to be relevant to me. And AI and omnichannel has really enabled that where uh, let's say, you know, if, if I'm a customer who's actually complained about something right away and I get a marketing message about that service itself, it's not a good experience at all. Uh, uh, AI has ensured that all these platforms, whether it's a customer care platform or your ticketing desk platform or your marketing automations or your CRMs have, are integrated in a way where I get um, a personalization at scale where they know that uh, I am that one person who is coming to you on various channels. I think that is one of the biggest contributions of AI. Apart from that, of course, uh, in content, it has helped us big time. Uh, you know, you can look at uh, the ads, which are programmatic ads, you know. They are, of course, AI plays a major role in that. So AI is part of uh, our life. AI is everywhere. And uh, uh, the adoption of AI in the software products like us, we've been doing it for years. And Gen AI also has enabled us to uh, bring much more features that will make uh, life easy for the users of our platform, give them delightful experience, and at the same time make their customers happier. Uh, so yeah, thanks to AI, things are moving very fast and uh, we have to keep adding new features in our product. No, absolutely. And I think what you mentioned about, you know, how content is evolving so much faster and in so many different ways with AI. In fact, at Tabula also, if I may take a quick example, you know, we have tools like, uh, you know, our creative shop or our ad, uh, you know, on, in advertising side, uh, what can happen is that tomorrow if a client wants to very, very quickly change and optimize creatives, uh, they can do it with a click of a few buttons. Um, and I think that enablement is actually leading to not just better performance, uh, but real-time action from marketers, which was a bit of a white space till now. So uh, in my mind, I think AI is helping address a lot of these white spaces in content. So would love to understand from you, Fela, how do you see the evolution of content? Like we understand speed, we understand optimization, but is there anything else that you think in the content creation domain particularly that Gen AI can help us do? Yeah, sure. Um, so, as they say, content is king, or they usually say content is the new currency. I, I really believe in it, because what we monetize is content. So, what we also see in the market and what we are doing um, day in and day out is, uh, in, in simple terms, the way that I can put is, we see an emergence of something called content supply chain. Right? So, think about the supply chain of a content. It starts with... Uh, planning and strategy and so on, you know, the agency folks will know this really well, uh, getting the briefs and planning the workflow. And then after that, you start creating um, and you start building concepts and building on it and then um, have an output. After that, you have to activate and launch it um, and then host it, right, the asset management part of it. It doesn't end there. You have to do analytics and 
um, uh, sort of the KPI performance measure and so on. So that whole chain used to sit very differently, right? So one uh, team would do it in some platform and the other team would do the design in some other platform. And if you really look at it, it's messy and it's unoptimized. So what we see is companies and agencies are putting together what is called content supply chain very linearly. And you get lots of um, optimal outputs and collaboration over there. And now the role of Gen AI in this is everywhere. So it can pre-populate your, for example, creative briefs, right? And it can know you and it can learn what you want. Um, very soon we'll have uh, pre-populated briefs, uh, campaign briefs, for example. And even in the creation, if you train the AI well on your brand guidelines, it can generate, in my estimation, at least 80% of the output. Uh, but you never straight away publish something that comes from, let's say, um, the Adobe tools or mid-journey. You still have to import it and touch it up. But uh, as much as 80% can be uh, you know, on brand and so on and so forth. And you, you keep going uh, through the supply chain. And even on the measurement, you can use those analytics to feed the first one, the planning, right? So um, the bleeding edge of uh, the content supply chain practitioners are already seeing you know, that their campaign cycle, which used to be like six months, seven months, have come down to as little as seven days. So that's what we see in the market as well. Well, that's a great point. And Rajat, I would love to hear your view on this, that now that we have seen uh, so much of automation happening, uh, the rise of AI as the panel topic is, and now the rise of ML also, and like you said, almost 80% of it, you can get it right, and maybe the remaining 20% then requires human intervention. How do you view this from a point of view of agencies? Do you, do you believe that agency professionals should feel threatened in some way? No, I, I think... Uh Agencies uh, should see this as a blessing, not not blessing in disguise. I would say just as a simple blessing. End of the day, uh, I, I fundamentally believe that uh, AI AI can come, AI tools can come, and hundreds and thousands of tools can come. Uh, but but why do you go to agencies? You don't go to agencies just to uh, get technical support. Let me put it this way. Yeah, and and I'm surrounded by experts who are all from agencies. So we go to agencies because we believe in people. We go to agencies because uh, we believe in the power of thinking which humans can bring. So while there are AI tools which are coming, which can write the content, and I, I, I see AI uh, to be a conversation starter. Just to give you an example, uh, if I have to get a and I come from Schneider Electric, very proud that year after year the company is rated as number one in sustainability. Yeah, You pick any forum, you talk about Schneider Electric sustainability very proudly. Uh, if I have to write something about sustainability, AI can only do a first level job. It can create a draft for me. It cannot create the end output. And that is where the role of agency comes. Now, agencies have to use AI tools to see that the routine tasks, yeah, the tasks which is, which is something uh, like copywriting or checking errors, etc. Yeah, the routine stuff, the operational stuff, that needs to be offloaded to AI tools. That is what AI tools eventually are going to help agencies. And do and you really use the human brain, which no one eventually can read to do strategic thinking. So therefore, agencies, from my perspective, more and more in the time to come will be using uh, their employees and their teams to do more strategic thinking and use AI tools to do repeat tasks which computers and, and other uh, tools can do. So I don't see this as a threat at all. It is up to the agencies to leverage this as an opportunity Obviously, the challenge is how do you scale your people? How do you hire people uh, which can develop competency so fast to learn so many tools? Yeah, so like I was shocked when uh, Fela said that soon there will be tools which can write brief. Yeah, I mean the tool will write the brief is very interesting thought. But end of the day, you need somebody needs to read that brief because if the brief is wrong, everything is wrong. 
yeah so so i see this as an opportunity i see this as a big opportunity for agencies to seize the moment yeah and 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 together use ai to help clients like us to do better yeah awesome um so so clearly you know one of the things that we hear is uh, should people feel threatened and this just i mean doesn't just apply to agencies that's one big topic of conversation but the other big topic of conversation is also that is ai more of a buzzword right now and is there true and genuine adoption of ai uh, on enterprise brands so samir your very candid point of view we would love to have on ai adoption in india the reality yeah i'll i'll come to that question just a few things i would like to add on what rajat mentioned and what pela said uh, see uh, if you look at uh, ai as a threat for agencies then you know we we cannot deny it uh, there is <laughs> some threat definitely for instance uh, you know earlier uh, because automation or ai automation was not there you would require more people to do a certain job for example uh, in in our products also we have simplified in such a way where uh, brands would demand us by saying what kind of ai automation is there so that i can respond to my customer queries or at least take care of the l1 support uh, so there is google business reviews automation replies there are automated replies on twitter dms there are automated replies on your facebook comments uh, there is there is a way to hide delete comment if certain criteria is matched this is what an ai is enabling us great for brand great for me as a customer great for me as an agency also where i can actually uh, train the ai models uh, in that fashion but has it reduced jobs uh we cannot deny that it has definitely reduced jobs if earlier there were uh, 25 agents required on a certain thing uh, now there are 10 agents that are required blame us for creating products like that but that's what the brands demand so in a way uh, there is uh, there is some threat because of because of ai and as fell also mentioned you can actually use the in insights to create uh, the uh, models we do that i mean we we make we make insights also easy easily available earlier there were bi tools where experts were required today you can write an english syntax and uh, create charts in our platform using so have we taken jobs yes we have taken jobs <laughs> so so in, in that sense ladies and gentlemen we have the debate yeah so <laughs> two opposing so, point of views so that point mm. that point remains yeah uh, and adoption of ai that is something that is much faster then then what we have seen i mean india in fact we work in uh, around 30 countries and i see that india is, is very fast in terms of its adoption a lot of other countries uh, they last the first question like when we go to middle east and we speak they they last the first question is a platform built on ai and we say yes and we explain what the ai is but if they have to use our platform they'll be like you know using 20 30% of our features whereas india would like to use 110% of our features so they'll demand a lot more so adoption in india for uh, software saas products specifically and all saas products are now moving towards the uh, the ai thing it's it's uh, a way to fast i can tell you from the technology point of view uh, from the marketing side of things of course you know there are experts who can tell much better than me <laughs> so we know um, you know till now our discussion has been focused more around content and uh, you know how how automation is influencing content i want to zone out a little bit now and talk more about context as well uh, so for example you know at at the bola which is a leading content recommendation platform across the globe one of the things that we say very often is that while content is the king context is the queen so what you say but also when you say and to whom you say makes a lot of difference so i want to bring in a bit of focus around the when of it right the context of it so that uh, whatever advertising that we are doing it hits the right spot and hit all, hits all the right notes so would love to understand uh, you know in your experience uh, based on the different clients you worked with different car campaigns that you might have run how have you utilized the power of context to elevate the game is it for me yeah anybody yeah. can take it yeah all right sure yeah so by the way i i don't want to go home be, being remembered as the ai yeah, will take everyone's job uh, kind of a thing right so <clears throat> so what i said is ai is extremely powerful before i get there i just want to clarify um i didn't come up with this quote but i often use it and i think i said it quite early on which is ai will not take your job but someone using ai would right so that's really where it is um and i think it kind of sums up uh the seemingly 
uh, two contrasting points, but there's a middle ground to it, which is um, using AI, um, you can do much more. So to your point, uh, the context, right? So the way I see uh, any marketing strategy or content strategy, if you will, uh, is exactly what you said. Uh, content is king, but context is queen. Um, so the AI, which is not talked about so much these days. So these days, it's all Gen AI, right? Which can generate text or image or both or anything uh, that you can think of in, in forms of content. But the AI, which is older, much more proven, is the AI in data. So in Adobe, we have something called Sensei. And it is the thing that helps you do something really cool in Photoshop to uh, deep analytics uh, and complex data modeling in, let's say, Adobe Analytics. So that <coughs> power of um, uh, data and knowledge gives you such a great context, right? So you can mostly know real time what your customers are doing and if, depending on what kind of data that you uh, are inputting, let's say third party data or your own first party data, you can actually know a lot about people uh, to the level that it is dangerous, right? So, uh, and we talk, most often talk about strategy. So, I feel that in the space of context and strategy, there, the marriage between human intuition and um, AI data um, it's often neglected, but it, it is at least 15 years old. And we've come a long way. Um, and that uh, is beautiful. And um, the way that I see that is the best context is derived from co-piloting with data science, right? Human intuition plus data science will give you the best context ever. Amazing. I love it. Human context and data science will give you the best result. I think that's... A a line that we can definitely take home from this panel. Would you like to build further on that, Rajat? No, no, I agree. I think context is extremely critical and it's all about prioritization, yeah? So, just to give an example in our organization, in any organization, you have so many functions, so many departments. Everyone wants to use AI, yeah? And... Uh, I mean, there is one PNL. You can't really go and say that if there are 50 departments, all 50 will take AI and all 50 will use AI and all 50 will will deliver the same. So we, we, we need to be, I mean, what I'm bringing again and again is we need to be in a real world. End of the day, you also need to run businesses. You need to manage PNLs. So like in our organization, sales is one function where we are trying to use AI in a very big way. Yeah, so we are doing something with Microsoft, with Microsoft Copilot. Yeah, so, I mean, gone are the days when people will join Teams meeting and takes minutes and all those. I mean, Copilot helps you take those minutes of meetings, cull the data for a salesperson, generate insights, predictive analytics, etc., etc. Another interesting use case we are using is in HR. We, have, we are using a custom version of chat GPT called Joe GPT which is uh, uh, enterprise level uh, uh, open AI platform, uh, which is particularly being used by HR team in our organization. Anyone wants to get any information about any policy, anything to do with HR. I mean, they don't need to go to HR department or people. I mean, everything is available. When it comes to marketing, again, there is a, there are use cases. We use any word. Again, we use uh, Adobe. We use, we use multiple tools. But, I think what, what is uh, changing now is differentiation is becoming extremely critical. What we are finding, at least that's my personal take, check, check. that it is becoming extremely difficult to use an AI tool in marketing without a solid human intervention and differentiate. So, I mean, we have done a lot of use cases where we have used multiple tools and sometimes we are finding that if if... The prompt is same. If two companies are giving the same prompt, the tool is delivering exactly the same output. So, looking at the context, uh, it is extremely critical for marketeers to see how much they use AI and at what stage they stop and use human thinking. I think which brings me to my next question. Um, 
you know, because there is, of course, a lot of human intervention also here. And like you said, it's about using the tools smartly, knowing when to start and when to stop. But then it also raises the question of trust, right? Because a lot of the information, content, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, generated by AI, despite using the best of data science, the best of modeling, is ultimately coming from, you know, predetermined uh, inputs, historical data, and so on. So how do you enable trust in an environment? So like why I ask that is also because, for example, at Taboola, a lot of the work that we do is with several publishers where the journalism inspires the trust because there are real humans deeply looking into trends and then writing the stories that matter to people. So there is an element of trust there. Tomorrow, when you have to do the same content production at scale or you have to do, let's say, something else, um, how do you ensure that the trust angle comes in? So maybe you can take that, uh, Samir, and, and help us understand how to strike that balance where ultimately your customer or your consumer trusts you against a backdrop of your customer also being aware today that is this AI or is this something that the brand is authentically trying to push in the market? Uh, no, uh, from security st standpoint, uh, you know, the way we look at AI, uh, there's a huge role of uh, security because, you know, uh, if you want to do business in Europe, there is GDPR. If you want to do business in India now, there's DPDP. So, uh, when, when users share their information on any platform where you interact with them, uh, you cannot give that information to the open source Gen AI, get the answers from there and then uh, send the reply back. Uh, so a lot of customers with whom we interact and we work with a lot of banking customers and you know BFSI brands globally. The first question is uh, how secure is the data uh, and because we are hosted on all local platforms that is one fine thing but do you use AI and do you use open AI and how the personal data of a user is secured uh, on your platform and beyond your platform if you are sharing that data. Uh, so you generally cannot use straight away an open AI in uh, software platforms. We actually build a wrapper, build our own LLM models and then use the AI. Uh, so security is a huge thing. I think uh, we still are not matured in the way we understand uh, AI and security. Uh, when we say we, everyone, like, you know, because it has come very fast to us. We have adopted it. Uh, but, but if you look at it from the security lenses, there's a lot more to be done. Uh, you know, because if I share my information about my email ID or my mobile number uh, and, uh, you know, whether it's in Europe or Middle East and India and anywhere, you have your own laws. Uh, but what if you pass that information straight away to an open AI, get the feedback and then gives, uh, give that response back? Uh, although we talk of LLM models and all, it, there is a lot of, there's a lot to be done on the security side of things where this data is not just masked but not shared with the open AI. At the same time, I also want that personalized uh, response back from the AI. Not that I'm directly sending it to the customer, but I'm empowering my agents with those kind of responses. So, you know, in a sense, AI definitely complements a lot of work that we do as humans. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't completely replace. To some extent it does, but it, it complements a lot. And in, in that sense, the whole security uh, thing is, uh, is something, uh, to be honest, even, even the experts still are, uh, you know, the jury is out on it. Know. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a very valid response. Uh, but I think this is more from a B2B lens, right? Where it is still controllable because you can have one on one conversations and, you know, you can explain to customers, uh, partners, etc. But if we take the hat of B2C for a minute, and nowadays I hear a lot of consumers uh, talk about, uh, and rather pass comments like, Pata nahi ye sahi bhi hai ya nahi, aajkal to har cheez AI se ban jati hai. Uh, and sometimes, you know, they don't react to the communication the way a marketer might have imagined it in their minds because the customer does not have trust. So on the other side of this whole story is, is also the early signs of trust erosion with customers in the B2C space. So any reactions on that? Do you, do you see that getting mitigated or do you see that increasing in the future? So I think AI is becoming uh, so important that people are thinking that everything is made using AI. Yeah, so it is extremely becoming difficult to differentiate what, what AI has done and what humans have, have done. But, but I think that is where 
uh, and that is where i would say agencies come in the picture yeah how do you how do you combine the power of ai and and the power of human thinking to bring that trust i i fully agree uh, now i mean as we are also consumers yeah end of the day when we also see something interesting the first reaction is yeah ai would have done the magic yeah so because I mean, and everyone is i mean so much into ai these days uh, that that is there but but then there are brands uh, which which make a difference i mean you stand out i mean you can see four creatives and content and if you can figure out sharp people can figure out what is ai what is not ai and that is where i would say the role of agencies come i mean agencies are there to to bring that a uh, trust factor amongst audiences whether it is b2c whether it is b2b whether it is anyone else yeah and 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 how do you make your content authentic because your content has to connect with the right audience at the right time but also in a emotional way ai has no emotions ai has has nothing yeah i mean ai tool has no emotions when it's writes humans have emotions so you need to let's say write a script for a tvc humans will think in in various ways which a computer might think but not fully so so that is where i would say uh, agency will uh, come in the picture and, and and a big responsibility will be on agencies to ensure that that trust factor continuously remains super and that brings us back to the core uh, topic of the panel today which was agencies versus ai i would love to understand from you fella that you know nowadays agencies um have to push so many different narratives there was a time when they were talking about metaverse then they shifted to crypto then they shifted to blockchain today it's ai in any case you know even before all of all of this um there was so much rapid integration uh, happening across different uh you know uh, different aspects of digital also so there was for example influencer content community omni ex- social media etc etc how do you suggest and propose you know for our audience in the room that amongst these 100 things that are really progressing so fast in the digital ecosystem how do you suggest agencies prioritize for their clients sure definitely uh, before i get there i just want to add um something on the you know um the check that we need to do on authenticity and so on and so forth on images right i'll just pose you a question how does the fbi uh, right now check for image authenticity authenticity by using ai so ai will generate lots of uh you know even malicious and and uh, really bad content but you can use the same ai power to check all of those right so i was just joking with one of my friend if i have to have a startup now i'll have a responsible ai engine who will who, which will check all other ais right so that's a joke but jokes aside uh, that's really what we are doing in adobe as well which is one of the biggest use case is also for qceing right the output of ai so that's one of the thing that i just wanted to add um to your question um what are the two three things that we should think about uh, especially for agencies um and and there are lots of fads in technology and that's the nature of technology right i've been in the technology space for uh 20 odd years uh things come and go some stay something like cloud now it's the name of the game uh i believe ai is as big as internet and cloud um or if not bigger so i think there are three things um and some of them are mental shifts and 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 frameworks to think about uh, ai the first one is think about ai as copilot no less and no more okay no less because if you think about ai uh, lesser than a copilot you're missing something so if you look at the spectrum there is the uh, extreme uh, of the spectrum who says ah ai is a tool ai is a toy right uh, not really it doesn't matter humans are creative we don't need so you're missing something if you're at that end of the spectrum but if you're at the other end of the spectrum who says ai will take away everything uh, we have ai now we don't have to do anything that's too extreme right in the middle is a really beautiful middle part which is ai as copilot so that is i think a, a mental framework which will help every agency and every marketer right and the second one is 
uh, everyone needs to become a techie. Uh, we have one techie here. I envy him. I'm not a full techie. I, I was doing BCom, right? So anyway, so um, we see an emergence of creative technology team. Uh, and my team also tells me that uh, in almost all the Fortune 500 uh, uh, companies, what we see is there's a creative technology team who thinks through this. So um, I know that it's really good to be on the creative side of things, uh, dreaming concepts and trying to crack the big idea. But you have to have a technology mindset uh, to really, um, you know, get into the, to, to be the agency um, of record in the age of AI. So there's, there's this emergence of um, creative technology. And lastly, uh, and this will be my last point, Everything will be based on workflow, like it or not. It was like that, right? So sales, sales didn't have any format, whatever. Came CRM, everyone has to follow workflow. We hated it, I was in sales when CRM was widely adopted. The CFO team, uh, you know, finance is all book, it's all in the book. And then SAP and Oracle and, and so on and so forth gave them ERP. They had to fall in line and do all processes. Marketers and agencies will have to adopt workflow. There's no escape. So three things, right? AI as co-pilot. Um, number two was, um, you know... Um, everyone is a techie. Everyone should be a techie. And number... Thank you for helping me. Um, five points for that. And then the last one is... Workflow. Yeah. <laughs> Everything will become a workflow. Amazing. So my last question before we get into a really fun um, rapid fire round is, is to you, Samir. Uh, since we spoke about our end consumer and how he's feeling and the trust factor and everything, I also want to understand from you, you know, uh, given your closeness to customer service as a concept, how do you feel AI can elevate the notion of customer service? Yeah, I think I already answered that. You know, personalization at scale is the answer to it. Okay. And, uh, you know, in terms of customer success, what, what I really, uh, what we really aim for is, is an omni-channel experience that a customer gets no matter what all channels they come from. Uh, and I think that's something that now with the advent of AI, of course, we can bring it in the products and that's where the, you know, uh, brands can actually uh, use that for uh, the one view of the customer across channels. Uh, and and uh, one thing I want to add uh, to what Fela said, you know, uh, the CRM part, right? You know, salespeople hate CRMs. I have quite a few, uh, couple of salesperson in my company here, and they're laughing already. And that's one thing we have a very difficult time <laughs> to maintain the CRMs, yeah. But the way it is important for salespeople to maintain the CRMs, it's very important for, for the agencies to adopt uh, AI and workflows. Amazing. So just before we wrap, uh, we're going to do a fun rapid fire round of sorts. Um, Coffee with Kanika, my version. So I'm just going to say a word and you have to react to it in a single word. The first word that comes to your mind. So we'll start with you, fella. Uh, metaverse. Flop. <laughs> so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Your turn, Samir. Buzzword. <laughs> Buzzword, okay. Rajat? Mm. Super flop. So, <laughs> does the audience agree? Show of hands. Wow. Very interesting. All right, let's move to the next one. Blockchain. Fella, you, you go first. Interesting. Okay. Don't know much. No comments. Sorry, what did you say? I said, don't know much yet. Okay, all right. Hmm. For very specific use cases, not there for many, uh, many applica applications. What, one word. Uh, Go for it. Blockchain. Uh, NFT is good over there. Awesome. Going back to you, crypto. Cryptic. I think he's winning the he's winning the hamper. Do we have one? <laughs> All right, Rajat. I'll say important. Okay. I, I'm not into it. Okay. Um, let's dial it up. Internet of Things. Reality. Differentiator. Nice. Super interesting. 
Lovely. Last one, Web3. Mm, web Web 4. I'm already waiting for the next one. Interesting. Already there. All in there. And out of all of these trends, because we spoke about AI already, so we, I won't touch much upon it. If you had to pick one to, to suggest to your agency partner, which one would you pick as an area of focus? So we'll go for it. You can take, you can lead. Out of the ones which we just spoke? We just spoke about, you know, metaverse, crypto, blockchain, Web3, IoT, etc. Oh, I would say agencies should pick metaverse and, and convert something which is super flop into super hit. Because when it was launched, yes. it was launched that this is the next big thing. So if there is an agency which can comes forward because and comes forward and say, because it's a super flop now, but it is a reality in the years to come. So for for me, if because all the other things which we talked about are, are things which have already seen some success. So Metaverse has not seen success, so any agency which can do something good about it, I mean, uh, would be good for everyone. Super. I, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, fun rapid fire round. I'll take a minute to summarize the findings and the discussion of this panel. Um, I think one of the things that we say often at Tabula is, uh, you know, artificial intelligence is actually average intelligence because it's ultimately just coming out of a lot of predetermined data. So it needs the human creativity, spark and brilliance to elevate it and take it to the next level. And it's amazing how well that resonates uh, with the message given by our panelists as well. So I think the one takeaway definitely from this room can be, uh, you know, AI is all about using it as a co-pilot, about having a sense of balance and using the human intuition and knowing when to start and when to stop. And second, as Fela said, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's, it's a technology-oriented world, so it's best that you put on your tech hats along with your creative hats and walk the talk, adopt your workflows and make CRM uh, uh, you know, a more interesting part of your life uh, instead of discounting it like most of us do. I'm, I'm also, I've, I've also been guilty of it. And I think the third and I think the most valuable thing is at the end of it, it's about maintaining trust with your final customer, whether it's in B2B and B2C. So, you know, lead with that authenticity and make sure that your customer continues to trust you and is inspired by your brand, is, is, is inspired by every single thing that you do. Uh, that's it from this panel, unless anyone has some final thoughts. A uh, big thank you to everybody, and I sincerely hope that you enjoyed it, and a big thank you, round of applause, for a very, very esteemed panel here. Well, thank you so very much, and before we wrap, I'd like to request my audience to please come up with some interesting questions. Anyone, you'd like to ask something? Just raise your hands, we'll pass on the mic. That gentleman at the last, can we please pass on the mic? Okay, hi, so first of all, my name is Deepak. I'm the Executive Creative Director with the Magnon Group. Uh, I've got a question for the entire panel. I'd love to hear from all of you. Um, I'm asking a question on behalf of, I think, all creative people. If you had to give a 30-second elevator pitch from the tech perspective, from the uh, client perspective, from the agency partner perspective, fella, as to how agencies should best implement and adopt AI, what would be your 30 second elevator pitch? I'd love to know the answer to that question. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can keep it in one sentence and save 20 seconds. Do it or die. <laughs> See, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, AI is here, yeah, so you need to live in a real world, you need to leverage the real moment. As, as Fela said, do or die, but, but I would say be smart in making the right choice, yeah, because everywhere there is AI, so you need to be really smart to make the right choice and don't get lost. That is my one thing which I would say. Don't get lost in the ocean of AI. The pitch from the agencies uh, for the brands uh, on AI shouldn't start with AI. 
uh, because you know a lot of software products also do that mistake where they say our product is built on AI and then the whole narrative is about AI. The narrative is not about AI, the narrative is about customer experience and uh, AI is a tool for that. So your pitch shouldn't actually include AI in it. According to me. I would, I'll also try and answer it in 10 seconds. Uh, I would just say that always remember that NI trumps AI. So natural intelligence before artificial intelligence. And I think just to be able to balance that for your brands, if you can do a great job, I'm sure the brands would be happy to work with you. Well, that was a really interesting question. We are hoping for more volunteers to come up with some interesting questions to ask. Can we please pass on the mic on the first round table? Hi everyone, thank you very much for interesting panel discussion. Uh, primarily Rajat to you, but uh, fella, Samir, uh, Kanika, anyone. When you go to clients, to prospects, to leads, new business development, a lot of clients ask us about how have you, how are you already using AI? So understandable and, and that's expected. At the same time, uh, we all also understand um, AI is relatively new in the sense that uh, uh, you know, gating of AI is still an issue. I mean, those are open platforms. What you put in to extract information for your own benefit will tomorrow be used by a competition uh, because it's an open uh, platform. So organizations like us that are part of a larger network, say, an Omnicom here, we are guided by a lot of policy framework, uh, you know, as to something has to be safe to be used, you know for ourselves, for our clients. Whereas what we come across from clients and prospects is that aap nahi kar rahe hain, but um, the you know, small shop next door, uh, Santnagar, you know, lower ground floor and upper ground floor, you know, they are using it or unho ne toh ek demo bhi dikha diya. And, and we are kind of stuck there. So my question to you is, uh, do you at all uh, recognize, respect the uh, privacy, safeguarding, uh, gatekeeping, you know, that are still uh, not resolved issues on AI, number one. Secondly, in how much hurry you actually are, uh, you know, for AI to be used for your own brand, for creative communication, etc. Yeah, I'll start and maybe fellow panelists can add. So I think privacy is extremely critical. Uh, Schneider being a French company, I mean, we are governed by GDPR. Yeah, so we do not work with flash in the pan agencies. Uh, we work with agencies and companies and, and I know, I mean, you have different type of agencies and partners. Uh, data privacy is extremely critical. Now, all of us have been hearing about third party cookies, which, which, which I think one of the last, I'll not name, name the organization which announced, but I think they announced a cutoff date that they will be, they will be uh, a foregone conclusion. And I think that date has not come till now. But, but we are extremely critical of data privacy. It is important that the data which we capture is captured with the proper consent of all our partners. We do not believe in misusing data at all. In, in, in ex, and, and we have seen cases which are happening wherein you might be in a hurry. And, and to your other question, I'll club, we are not in any kind of hurry. So the world is not going to die tomorrow. Yeah, so, so we are not in so much hurry that, that if I don't take a action today, so tomorrow the world is going to get over. We are very conscious about what we do. Yeah, so I, I would rather, and, and that is what I always tell people inside the company, it's better to apply your brains and take a little bit more time to take a decision rather than taking decisions so fast then, and, and then you have to. So I think to your first point, extremely critical. Uh, no negotiations, data privacy, according to me, is like ethics. You can't play with customers' data. Personally, I would not like to engage with companies which play with my data. A lot of companies do. You, you, you end up giving data to one platform and, and you start getting so many calls. I mean, you didn't give that data. I mean, I disassociate with those brands immediately. Extremely critical, good agencies have to differentiate on data privacy, according to me. Yeah, so, f 
fundamentally you have to uh, know how to think about this, right? So AI are most often just algorithms that are trained on something. So for an agency, the fundamental question to ask is, what was this AI model trained on? For example, if you're using, I hope there are no employees of OpenAI here, DALI. DALI is trained on images around and across the internet. So it's never commercially viable. You can't use it to monetize. Okay, unless you have a custom model that you trained on your own image. So that, you have to differentiate with something like Adobe Firefly. I, I just happen to work for Adobe, I'm not pitching, but uh, Adobe Firefly is trained on Adobe Stock, which is our image repository. It is commercially viable. If you have subscription to Adobe Firefly, uh, Adobe Stock, you can use it and monetize it because you hold the copyrights. So that differentiation is extremely important. What is that AI model and AI engine trained on? Is it commercially viable? If there is a no in any of it, don't use it for agencies because the, reper the repercussion is very, very heavy. Um, you can break all the, all the laws, right? So uh, that is one fundamental question that you can ask which will help you in a long way. I have a lot of things to say, but let, let's keep it short and let's keep it at that. Well, I hope your question is being answered. More questions? Just raise your hands. Anyone? Then thank you so very much. I think we had a great discussion. I'd like to thank all the panelists and the moderator for conducting this session so well.